Hi guys, we're here today with Luke Smith from Sunergy in Bendigo. It's always nice to have a regional dealer because uh, you get the true perspective of off-grid and long-distance traveling, etc., etc. So let's go for our solar and battery podcast with Luke Smith. Welcome to the show. So Luke, you've been in solar for, you, you, I just saw you and I said, Jesus Christ, you, you just told me you're what, 37? 37. 37. I said, you look like late twenties or so. You, you you're using face cream or something, eh? Soap and water. <laughs> in any case, how long you been doing solar? Five years solar, twenty years electrical. Right. So you're one of those guys who been looking over to solar and you never got the wisdom to not touch it, is it? Uh, yeah. My old boss was scared <laughs> of it, so we never touched it. We stuck with our uh, industrial PLC side of things, and uh, yeah, and then moved to Bendigo and took a job ad. That was it. Right. And I hear you now took over that business. So give yes. us the whole story, you know, electrician, doing solar, now suddenly jumping into it, taking over a business. It's a bit of a scary time, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tony just come to me and said, I'm retiring and do you want to buy it? So I think you're, that was sort of it. So how how been the yeah. first few months been? What um, we- steep learning curve. Um, but joys of buying an established successful business is uh, that everything's sort of there and you just sort of, it runs itself even without me there. So, mm-hmm. I mean, Sunergy has been gone for a long time in the wider Bendigo area. You've yep. installed a lot of off-grids, a lot of residentials. So do you get a lot of word of mouth inquiries? I think mainly we're word of mouth. Um, we seem to have pretty good rapport with people and um, when it comes to off-grid, uh, a lot of the other installers actually send them our way because they don't do it or don't understand it. I'm not sure, but yeah, we've had a few inquiries from other solar companies where they've said, we've got this customer and there you go, mm. you take them. So word of mouth is really quite valuable because it basically means you've done a good job last time, is it? In country, <laughs> country Victoria it is. You know, they're, they're very much a use local and um, yeah, they, they listen to their mates and go, all right, well, I'll go. And mm. so, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what services do you now provide? Um, residential solar, batteries, off-grid, uh, EV charges. Um, we're actually, one of my mates is an importer for an EV charger. So we use his one so that we can use, we've got local tech support and everything like that. So, um, yeah. Is that growing, EV charging at the moment for Sunergy? Getting more inquiries. Um it's, it's, I think people are still a bit fresh on what's good and what's bad. So, um, our charges, I think are some of the better ones on the market because it's all integrated with the smart meters and, and CT. So you can have full control of the car charger instead of just the, basically a fancy outlet that has a three pin plug on it that you plug into your car and charge where this has got all the inbuilt requirements. So you can, it's got, um, um, it's got the solar CT, so you can set up charge cycles that it only charges with excess solar. It's um, also got site measurement as well, so that you don't blow your main fuse because you're putting 30 amps into your car and you're using your hot plates inside and it all just comes in and you trip your house out, where mm. this actually will ramp the car down so that you don't lose all your power or just mm. trickle charge until there's power available. So that's, um, I think, few have that option mm. where this is standard. So the Sunergy EV chargers that you now offer in the market yep. basically take the solar when there's excess. Yep. And if you happen to have your EV plugged in, at that point in time, that excess solar is the charging electricity. Yep. And she's literally, you're driving for free. Yes. Wow. Okay. Now, look, how do you see the whole future of EVs and solar and smart home? Um. I see it as in that people are going to want really good integrated systems that do everything and they don't have to think about it. Um, I think at the moment we're sort of facing the issue where people are getting batteries and then they want to get EV cars and chargers and and there needs to be a way to monitor that and manage it so that you're not just putting your battery into your car and, and that's pointless. You know, you might as well have it in your house and then obviously they're going to go, they're pushing for the vehicle to load and all those sort of things. Um, so you're looking for seamless yeah. solutions. Yeah. It? So I think seamless where it just 
you plug your car in and your house, just all the well, all the excess goes into your, your storage devices because, you know, you're not going to get anything for it soon. They, mm. they keep dropping the feed-in tariff, so mm. it's no good putting it out into the grid anymore. Mm. That, those days are gone. So would you suggest to customers who have a larger solar system to find ways to use it within the house most of the times and what are the options? Yes, yeah. So you, you really need to talk to the customer and find out how they live. Obviously, a retiree is probably not suited to a battery because they're home all day. They can manage their, their usage so that they're using it through the day. Um, and then, you know, if they're using it through the day, it's not going to go into a battery. So there's no point spending the extra money. Hmm. Maybe you just spend a little bit more on solar just so you know that during the day it's always going to be offset. Um, and then, but if you've got those customers that are working full time like I do, uh, our house is empty during the day and then we come home and cook and clean and get the kids in the bed and all that and all our nighttime uh, usage is just coming straight off the grid. Um, and yeah, so. Those customers would do well with a battery. Well, yes, with a battery or, you know, a, a, if they've got an EV, a car charger that puts it into the, into the car because there's no point in charging it at night mm. at full rate. Got it. Got it. Um you, I'm sure you come across sometimes very cheap solar. Have you seen some real horror stories? Yes, and some of them aren't old systems. They're, they're fairly new, so it is just, yeah. Um, I think that's where you've sort of really got to show people what you offer and why you are not the cheapest but why you use quality products consistently. Um, we get a lot of jobs where you're going out to fix inverters that have just stopped working and the company doesn't exist, the installer was a subby, so he's, who knows who he is or where he is. Um, so yeah, you, you come in and you're telling them, oh, I'm sorry, it's not under warranty because they've told you 10 years, but that's only if you apply for this thing on the internet and register your warranty. So it's out of warranty and you're going to have to replace it. So yeah, and then just the general horror, just wires and stuff everywhere or, yeah, just unneat. What about the famous silicon all over the roof? Yeah, yeah, the, the dents in the roof that have been sealed up with silicon from just clobbing around on the roof. Um, yeah, and just just general. It works, but there's better ways. Mm, mm, mm. Are there situations where somebody might come into the Bendigo area from Melbourne or other places, quickly sell 10 systems, install them two weeks later, and they're never seen again for after sales? Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of them. Um, so then yeah. you have to actually go and fix the system that they sold and installed poorly. Yep. You take the uh, electrical responsibility for that system. How do you handle that? Um, a lot of the time we sort of explain to them that if we're going to touch it, we're going to have to do it to our standard. Um, if you want me to offer warranties and things like that, it's got to be installed by, by us. Um, it can be a bit hard for them to, to swallow because they've just spent $10,000 on this system and you go, I'm sorry that I don't know how it got signed off. Obviously you can then report them and try and chase it up, but there's limited access mm. when it comes to retailers and and, mm. and like using subcontractors and things. It's yeah, a bit hard to... But I mean, sometimes they only paid 4000 Yeah, some of them do get those real cheap systems and you explain to them why it's cheap, you know. That's 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 it. <laughs> that's all, that's all there is to it. There's, it's cheap for a reason. Mm, mm. Um, we got a partner in our network who says he can fix every cheap system with a wrench. He just pulls them off. Yep. <laughs> is that been your attitude too? Occasionally. Um, oh, look, we we try to work with the customer. I don't just say throw it in the bin and start again because you know solar panels. They can still be okay, you know, mm. like even the cheap panels are, are fairly efficient um, and you can work with inverters. It is sort of more bringing up the workmanship, you know. Usually the quality is okay, it's just the workmanship and that's where they are cheaper is it paying yeah. nothing to subbies mm. to do the job. So basically less clamps, uh, the cables are run horribly yeah. and the house looks pretty ugly. Yes. They possibly whack the inverter in the panels any which way and it could have made much cleaner and much more efficient. Is that the, yeah, uh, very much a make it fit and it's just, you, yeah, 
A lot of make it fit and, yeah, just. She'll be right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, yeah, cable runs and it, it's just those little things that make jobs neater. What I don't get is even if a system is $2,500 cheaper, it's only one year of solar income that makes the difference. So if you'd wait one year extra to get your money back, you possibly have a 10-year better system. Yep. Why do people go for it? Um, well, I think it is the information provided to them. They they don't understand that not all solar is the same. Um, you know, they get sold systems that apparently have all these warranties, but the warranty is only as good as the person that warranties it, you know, mm. unless you're going to start chasing up manufacturers and retailers yourself. If the person is gone, that's the it. The person's gone and you can't find him, well, it's no no good. Mm, yeah, yeah. So. Did you know over 850 solar companies have gone deliberately bust to avoid all those warranties that they spoofed out in big numbers? <laughs> that number seems small, <laughs> really. <laughs> um, it's possibly gone up a little bit since yeah, and I that's just it solar. Like, mm. well, you know, the building industry and all that's similar. You know, yeah, yeah. everyone just disappears. So what do you say, what's the advantage of using a local company? Uh, well, we have a local showroom, so if you're not happy, you can come and yell at us. Um, so that, <laughs> that tends to make it a bit easier. But um, I'm an electrician, so I'm in the office. You can come in and see me. Usually I'm the one that's coming to install it. I'm the one that's coming to service it. I'm the one that has to warranty it. So, um, yeah, it's a bit easier to deal with one person than getting bounced around. You know, you call the office. You speak to our office lady and she speaks to me. There's not, oh, I'll get hold of the electrician who might be in Melbourne and then he's got to talk to his. The subbie's back on Thursday. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You know, like the retailer sold it to the subbie who subcontracted it to another bloke and they came up in a van on a weekend with a couple of apprentices and, and bashed it out, bashed out four or five in a weekend and and they went back and they're doing the same thing. So trying to get them, you know, to come an hour and a half up the freeway to, to do a warranty claim for, you know, it's not big dollars getting thrown around for warranties either these days. So at least by keeping it local, they're more likely to come out quickly because mm. the warranty is covered by the manufacturer and mm. it's not mm. costing them money to warranty yeah. the issue yeah. basically. Yeah. How important is after-sales service? I mean, there's no moving part in solar. Oh, it's it's a power system, you know. Do you, if you didn't, didn't look after your car, it would it wouldn't work as efficiently as it needed to be. So you, you need to make sure that you catch the things that might happen. Um, you know, they're exposed to all the elements. So electrical connections in, in, in the elements has not always been proven to be a positive experience. So, um, you know, so that's it. It's more about making sure that you pick up things that might happen early um, so that you don't you know, open your power bill and you've lost three months of solar and you go, oh, what happened? Mm. And mm. then you got to start searching for the person and, you know, that's three months down the track after everything, so. Yeah, yeah. Do you recommend after-sales uh, inspections and what time frame? Uh, we, we put 12 months down. We reckon you should at least have it looked at 12 months. You could probably push it out a little bit, but I would say every 12 months have someone come and just make sure everything is still where it should be, mm. um, you know, we've had rocks that have been, you know, birds dropping rocks or things like that, you know, you've got a cracked panel and you didn't know or, or there's a plug that might be a bit exposed to the weather and it's not, not liking what's going on. Mm. So mm. Um, especially with some of the older systems with the old isolators, they should really be looked at and made and even discuss removing them mm. and going to the disconnection points now. So they're, they're a lot safer, I think, being mm. under under the panel, out of the weather, mm. not relying on someone tightening the screw correctly or over-tightening the screw and things like that. So Yeah. yeah. What about uh, using the electricity in the middle of the day to win hot water? Yeah. What, what are your options? Um, so there's several devices that allow you to just work like a catch power basically. They, they see the excess solar and turn on the hot water service and away it goes. Um, then obviously there's a lot of, um, heat pumps that have timers in them. You can just get them to turn on during the day. Obviously you need hot water. So whether it runs through the day off solar or there isn't enough solar for it, you're going to want the hot water. So, um, unless you really, but you know, 
Is and you guys offer heat pumps? Yeah, yeah, we do reclaim and ice store. So we try to stick with, with quality again um, instead of worrying about cheap. <laughs> cheap doesn't seem to work out very well for, for lots of things. So um, we try to stick with quality and, and people that back their products so that you're not left in the lurch if something goes wrong. Mm. And, you know, same thing. Very rarely do things go wrong when you use something that's actually decent. Mm-hmm. So let me explain heat pumps and why people should get off, let's say, gas, hot water, etc. You got solar. It's in the middle of the day. A lot of it generated. You might use the vacuum and the washing machine, but it's still more solar left available. If you now got something where you can send it into, like the hot water tank with the heat pump, you're now absorbing all your solar and you've made your solar the most valuable to you because at night you're not now pulling it out to heat your water. Um, so a heat pump is really like a, a, the cheaper version of a battery, isn't it, really? Yeah, well, it's it's another form of energy stored as another form of energy. It's it's mm. no different. It's, mm. it, there's a big battery, basically, but just yeah. used differently. And do you sometimes try to sell people a whole set, beating the solar, the battery, the heat pump, so that the whole house really works very efficient? We try to. You know, you, you, you always show them the full options that you can get, but obviously some people are in, you know, people have gone to, they think of hot water, they go to plumbers. Um, mm. But yeah, we, we always offer what they want and always try to push them towards what might be better. Mm. You know, it's, mm. it's half to say, oh, I've got a household and I've got this and, you know, induction hot, hot plates and there's six of us living in the house, but they all go to school and work and you go, well, it's great having... 10 kilowatts on the roof, but it's still doing nothing for you during the day because you're not there. So you need to look at changing that energy from the sun and putting it in other places, batteries, hot water services, pool pumps. cars, pool pumps, things like that, things mm. that you can put on timers or run through the day without you thinking about it. Even smart home phones now with everything on the Wi-Fi, you can turn things on and off. So, you know, the house is it's 40 degree day and you pump into the grid We'll turn the aircon on and cool your house down so that when you come home, it's not disgusting. And then it can run shorter and you can turn it off earlier once the sun goes down and you've saved yourself a fortune. So is it worth it nowadays to move sometimes the gas hot water system into a heat pump? Well, yes, because gas, you can't do anything with gas. Gas, you, you burn it and you pay for it, where at least with your, your energy and your power, you can put in things that will help offset. You've got your solar. It's mm-hmm. a big, mm-hmm. basically the big one. Um, so we, we go through the process of how they can use it better. So half the job is getting them to go and get solar and, and do that side of things. But then you've got to really teach people how to use it so that they get the benefits of it. Because mm-hmm. it's half to sit there and say, oh, you know, you build this, you should reduce it by this much and you'll pay it off in seven years and then you're in credit. But if you can change your way you live and how you use your energy – quickly that could become five you know you start actually making big differences Mm, mm. and uh yeah that's everything nothing's getting cheaper (laughs) nothing is getting cheaper especially power Mm, mm. i hear you had a very very high feed-in tariff for old solar owners what's the story there yep so the first people that sort of jumped onto solar when it was new um used to get like 66 cents um some people are on 40 but the, um, the premium feed-in tariff was um, rolled out for a long time. Uh, they were very small systems, sort of 1.5, 3 kilowatts at the max. Um, great for what you're getting when you put it into the grid, but most of them are finishing very soon. I think sort of September, no, between September I think it is, that most of them are running out. Um, so, yeah, soon you're going to have this small system that's, giving you nothing. So you're going to have So basically in Victoria, if I had an old solar system yep. and you were a solar owner and you've been going, wow, I'm having very low bills for a long time, the very long honeymoon is going to be over. Yes. And so September, November, yep. they'll all be rushing to their local solar guy and go, oh, I need to upgrade my system. But my advice is upgrade it now because... If you wait till November and there's a long queue, trust me, you're not going to get the best deal. <laughs> That's just my... No, we always give good deals. <laughs> <laughs> we always look after people. We'll try to. No, but look, if they're desperate, it's a good time to squeeze them a bit. Yeah, that's it. 
But you wouldn't do it or you would? No, I, I don't think ripping people off is worth it. You only get to rip person off once where if you look after them, you, you can get a good customer that's going to benefit you long term, whether it's referrals or, oh, well, I want an EV charger now. Mm. Let's go see X or Sunergy because they looked after me when I wanted my solar. And mm. So, yeah, you, I don't like taking advantage of people. Uh, no. So you don't run around and say if you buy solar, you get a $0 bill? You don't do that trick? No, nah, it's too hard to guarantee it. Um, yeah, no, nah, it, it's it, it's not not possible. Not You can maybe get a $0 bill, but the system's going to be massive and because, you know, at $0.04, or I think it's even dropping again soon, it's, um, $0.04, there's a lot of power you've got to put out to even just cover your service charge. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right, then. I won't convince you to do the shonky stuff then. <laughs> <laughs> um, what what certification and accreditations do you guys have to do solar and batteries? Um, so you need to have the solar grid connect accreditation um, and then there's the battery endorsement and then there's the standalone power system endorsement. So I hold all of them at the moment, which is good. Um, to be an approved retailer, you have to be associated with the net CC to make sure you're using good building practices and good business practices. So we've got that as well. Um, and then you have to do training every year for that? Yep. So there's ongoing training. I think it's 100 hours or 100 points of um, c- career professional development, CPD. Um, I also have to do that with my electrical license as well. So there's a lot of a lot of training that goes to, to keep your, your licenses and your endorsements. So. And you got them all? Yep, got them all. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, have you had situations, you deal with end customers, do you do the sales too? Yep. Right, okay. So would you have had, ever had an install where somebody gets a little bit cranky or misunderstood something and they start complaining and how do you handle that? Um, look, you, you can't please everyone. There are people that may not be entirely happy but I guess the biggest part is you sit down and talk to them and find out what it is that they're not happy about and sort of talk to them about what we can do to make them happy or what what they think is a a good outcome and then work within what you think is reasonable and what they think is reasonable and so we don't usually have too many customers that stay upset especially if they talk to us um the biggest problem, obviously, is if someone just runs out and starts telling everyone you've done the wrong thing, um, it's a lot easier to come and talk to us directly and say, oh, I'm not happy with X, Y, Z. Mm. Okay, well, what can we do to to, to make you happy? And But yeah. does it happen often? Nah, nah not really. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I think we do a pretty good job and we, we try and, you know, if you don't, don't make promises you can't keep. They can't be upset with you because you've told them all the information, you've provided them with proper details, proper data to show them mm. the outcome. Um, so usually, yeah, it's not usually many people that are upset at mm. the end of it because mm. you've told them how it's going to work and what it does and it does. Mate. Basically it does work how it's meant to work <laughs> and, yeah, that's it. So it's only the people that oversell or overpromise or underinstall, you know, like the quality is just not there and mm. your inverter goes or, you know, you yeah. yeah. Would you say it's true the old adamant you get what you pay for when it comes to solar and batteries? Yes, yes. We, you can see there's a lot of new battery systems coming out and um, I think the proof will be in the fact that they are new and a lot of new things tend to have a few little gremlins to start with whether that gremlin results in them disappearing like a lot of those solar companies and you're left with a, a, a boat anchor sitting in your front yard um, or if it stands the test of time, we try to stick with the brands that have. Um, we don't sort of rush out onto that new cheap option. Oh, yeah, this is a brand new battery or this is a brand new system. We can do it real real cheap for you. Yeah, the $3,000 battery hybrid install, read the fine print sort of thing, and you find out it's not quite what you think it is. But, yeah, we, we stick to the, the well-known, proven companies. That like Tesla? Tesla, yeah. Um, it's, probably, it's probably my favourite battery to install for a, for a domestic house because it does just work. And even if there are issues, it's actually usually done by 
Tesla before anyone even knows that there's been a problem, you know, it just, just goes. So we do Tesla, we do a bit of Q-Cell. They seem to, although the panel market has changed for us, the, the battery is, is good. Um, and then we, we stick with um, our off-grid um, off systems that tend to be the Australian-made stuff, Power Plus, Electronic. We do do Victron as, a, as another option, but we do like to push that Selectronic Power Plus combo and mm. just set and forget. And when you're off-grid, that's what you want. You don't want problems. Mm. So tell me a little bit about off-grid because you guys offer off-grid and yep. you are possibly the off-grid specialist in the wider Bendigo area because some of your competitors actually send in the customer because when it gets real technical, they don't want to touch it. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've had a few people that yeah, have inquired with a, um, in, our competitors and the competitors said, sorry, go and see Sunergy. Um, we just not. They're specialising in on-grid and you yeah. do both. Yeah, well, that's it. And we'd like to – I think we do off-grid really well. There's a couple of people around the area that do it really well and we work with them and we all bounce ideas off each other. So, you know, we don't really compete because we all – Bendigo's a big enough place that you don't need to compete, so to speak. But Being yeah. scratching each other's eyes out. Nah, nah. <laughs> so, I mean, we, 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 we work with um, Matt Wilson a fair bit and he's a, he's a good bloke and, yeah, we, we – you know, we're all in the same sort of area, but yeah. Look, if you learn about a new battery, etc., it's good to talk to somebody who's just handled it. Well, that's it. Yeah, you, you get a you get a problem, and sometimes tech support might be an hour, or you know, you you, you bounce it off people that may have seen it first before mm. you start chasing. You know, sometimes you just need a new set of eyes to look at a problem you're looking at because you're not seeing it because you did it. <laughs> you know, it's very hard to see your own f flaws until someone else looks at it and just goes, "Hey, mate, what about this?" And you're like. Yep. All right. Done. That's right. All right. Fix that. So, with my flaws, I just ask the misses. Yeah. Well, they're, they're very good. They, <laughs> they they see them all. So, all right. Now you do have a bit of a passion for off grid because you're yep. basically the power station for those people. If you stuffed up, yep, they shower in the cold. That's it. So yeah. I, I enjoy off-grid. It's um, completely different to doing your standard grid-tied system. You know, you've you've got to design it right so that their generator isn't running all the time or, you know, the, if they don't have enough battery storage and they can't get through the night and their kettle doesn't turn on in the morning, people get very upset when their coffee's cold or non-existent. So, um, Instant dust melt in cold water. I've tried it. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's a bit crunchy. <laughs> I was going to say, that, that, that's for you to have. I'll, I'll stick with the hot coffees. Um, but, yeah, you've got to get it right because, you know, it's a big investment, initial investment. Um, so because it's not the same as price as a grid connect. Because, no. But then again, you're also not paying the $100,000 to get it aligned to your house. Oh, it? yeah, yeah. So, so it's about 20 grand a pole, I think, if you you mm. call PowerCore and then um, and more that, on weekends. And that and they own it. So you're yes. paying all these bucks for somebody else. Well, if you get your off-grid system, yep. that's yours for life. Well, that's it, yeah. You pay pay to get the power there. Then you've got to pay the electrician to connect to the pit up to your house. Um, we've had a customer that... It was $120,000 to get power just to their block and their block was about a kilometre from the from the road. So they still then had to run cables from that pit up to the house. So he, he estimated it was about $150,000 to $160,000 just to get a simple, I think it was about 40 amp single phase supply to his house. He was building a, a big house and a farm and all that and 40 amps wasn't enough and at 150 grand, it's a lot of money. So we looked into an off-grid solution, and we came in actually much cheaper. So and he hasn't. We haven't had a phone call from him at all to say I've got a problem. So I think we had one problem, which was the the charger inside his generator um, burnt out, and his starter battery on the generator went flat. So in the depths of winter, um, when it needed to run its service cycle, it um, didn't start. And, um, but because I he, mean, he was still in battery, he was still getting his house warmed up. It was yeah. just that the backup was now much more weaker. So yeah. So if, yeah. if he, when he, his batteries, his system warned him that they were getting low mm. and he went out there and looked at his generator and goes, what's going on? Cause obviously it's pretty easy. And he went, oh, it's, it's not on, changed the battery and 
off it went. So, you know, that's because the battery charger, was, so we replaced the battery charger. Mm. But Look, the common problem with off-grid that I sometimes hear is that people don't use the generator much because the solar and the battery has been perfectly sized. And then three years later, suddenly one time, 10 days of rain and yep. the generator is supposed to start and petrol's all cronked up and old and yeah. <laughs> and they should have changed petrol or something like that. So that's that's with a good off-grid, that's kind of the only problems you have. You well, know? with a good off-grid, they've got um, your built-in um, built charge time. So mm -hmm. you can actually, it will run the generator for two minutes just to make sure it starts. So, mm -hmm. so what we tend to do is... Um, as we come into winter, we start looking through log files of our systems because it's all we've got them all online and we've got access as an installer to all the systems, and we can start looking to see whose generator didn't start for that that check cycle basically because mm -hmm. it it needs to run. I think I mean for that reason of fuel and and battery charge, it runs sort of once every seven to fourteen days. You want your generator just to kick on just to make sure mm -hmm. it is working. Um, so, yeah, you have a look in the data logs and see if the generator started it as it should have and you, all right, beautiful. And then if someone oh, hasn't started three times, you give them a call and find out what's going on. Could be unplugged. Usually it's a flat battery on the on the generator. Mm, mm. Their, their charger fell off. Or so you solid. basically help them monitor their own systems, is yeah. it? So you're kind of like the safety insurance bloke, is it? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> we, we try to keep on top of systems before there's a problem. And you um, don't charge for that. That's all part of the... So no, that's all part of it. If we don't have to l come out to the site, you, you can get that little bit sort of for free. We can sort of hit, mm. give you the One give you the heads up of yeah. this is this is going to be an issue if you don't fix it now. And mm. when it all shuts down and turns off, and it's always on a Friday at five o'clock, um, you know I don't like that phone call of I've lost power, <laughs> and you're like, oh, all right. But you know, it, it's yeah. a you, yeah. know, you get charged for a call out where if we monitor it and tell you there's a problem. It's not usually a charge. You can go to the kids' soccer play on the weekend. There. Yeah. yeah. Swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. I hear a lot about smart homes. Do you have any smart homes coming up in the Bendigo area? And what does it all mean? Um, I mean, we don't really work for builders. We work for customers. So we don't do a lot with that sort of smart home. But basically, it's just making sure everything works together, whether it's through monitoring on your phone or... Yeah, basically, it is just so you have control of everything. So you see you the whole to. infrastructure. But I mean, I hear that you can, when the smart home comes, the solar could power your blinds to come down at certain times and pretend there's somebody home, and your garage door will automatically open as you drive in. And again, it can be powered by your solar and your battery. I mean, that is the Jetson future. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, yeah, the, the fully integrated smart house that you can basically just control everything with a push of a button. People yeah. don't even look at each other all day. They'll be just on the phone no, that's uh, it. operating. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm closing the garage door, darling, and, you know, I'm bringing out the garbage. Yeah, my, my <laughs> brother's just built a house just like that and everything's on his phone, but... Yeah, so he can he can turn his aircon on, he can turn his aircon off, he's he, he can do all sorts of things just from his phone. But yeah, but that's about what it is. It's just so that it's about giving the person just control of everything instead of just turn the light on and the kids left it on all night. You know, you can sort of see, oh, hang on, this is on. You can turn that off. You mm -hmm. know, and obviously saves you electricity. Well, that's it. Anything that's running all day has got standby power. So if you think. That's it. Turned it off. You can turn it off, but then at the same time you can see your solar, even if it's left on, you can see that your solar is actually offsetting it. So mm. it's free energy and it's clean energy. Mm. I knew a friend that he had it all monitoring from work and he was that obsessed that if suddenly some electricity spike was coming, he's got three teenage daughters, are you all guys doing the hair drying? What's going on? <laughs> Sound, sounds like Tony, actually. <laughs> he used to do that with his teenage daughter. So. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you can actually spy on people just by using what's happening with the electricity. That's the future yeah. of the Well, they can home. turn it off now too. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, turn the power, power point off. Power is off, baby. So. Oh, my God. Um, do you tell people how much money they can save and how do you calculate that? Um, well, we use software to sort of calculate it. Um and that gives them a pretty good 
indication of, of savings. But the same thing is it, it's, it's a, you know, the maths is there, but you can change the way you use it and save lots more. So it's about showing them, look, this is estimated savings, but if you change a few things where, you know, your hot water starts turning on during the day um, instead of at night on, you know, night rates, even night rates, getting, they got, they're getting higher. So, mm. you know, free power is free power. So if you're heating up during the day with that excess solar and then just topping it up at night when you've got the two-rate metering, you know, it's... Mm. And I think pre-cooling and preheating the house is a smart way to go. Why wait till six o'clock and then crank the aircon on to make the house cool when you could have pre-cooled it with the solar? That's right, yeah. And then don't pay the big bucks at the end of the day because with time of day metering now, uh, six o'clock electricity is very expensive. Yeah, yeah. Some of that's yeah, A lot of those people that have, you know, I've got really good service charge rate or I've got a cheap morning rate or something like that, they... they they get it somewhere else, you know. So <laughs> if you've got a cheap u- a time of use rate, you've usually got a pretty expensive service charge or mm. something like yeah. that. So yeah. there, there is – it's very hard to find that real cheap power power bill. Um, so so just that's not, the way to go? Just not drawing off the grid is the way to go. Mm-hmm. Now, um, you'll be selling systems in the last few months and last few years – What's the percentage of people going with solar only versus solar and batteries? And what type of customers want a battery now? Um, most people that want a battery, um, they, they're getting a lot of power outages. So, you know, if you lose the grid, your solar is doing nothing. It, it doesn't generate um, because it's just, it has to disconnect from the grid for safety reasons. So unless you've got a battery to continue to create that grid, so to speak, um, the solar goes nowhere. It's just lost just lost mm, you know mm. so you, that saving that you're going to get is now gone um some people have you know you've got medical equipment you've a lot of people are working from home you know it's enough to say oh i've got my phone to make phone calls and i can hot spot it but like my house is in a mobile dead spot if i lose power i can't make a phone call off my mobile because i don't have internet um mm. so and the kids tend to get a bit upset when the TV doesn't turn on or things like that. So a lot of people are, yeah, sort of unreliable grid grid network or... Um, so that's the key reason in Bendigo. You don't have the people who want two Tesla Powerwalls to show off to the neighbours? Um, not not so much. Um, that's more for Melbourne, is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've seen one, one guy with a setup of he's pulled out, I think he pulled out six Powerwalls. So I just gave them to his mates and then um, he's now put in a, a full N-phase system, big three-phase, N-phase, I think it was 12 batteries. So he's loaded right up and I'm just like, should have just gone off-grid, <laughs> really. It probably <laughs> cost you about the same, but that's uh, my, my opinion anyway. But, you know, it's the same thing. It, people in even in Melbourne, which they don't think about off-grid, so to speak, and it doesn't have to be off-grid. It can still be hybrid. Mm. But the less you're pulling from the grid, the better. So, you know, and who knows what happens with the grid, yeah. you know. You see it in South Australia or even in um, some areas of Melbourne is that you can't export because there's just too much too much solar now. So they don't let you export and, and you sort of your reliability on the grid is becoming less and less where you need to be able to sort of stand alone mm. and go, well, you know, no matter how what happens up there with the power company, I'm okay because I can. I've got this. I've got my own self-supporting system. Yeah. And do you explain that to people in a sales angle? And do, are you selling more batteries nowadays? Yeah, that we we do. Sh- we try to gauge what they want the battery for um, because some some people that come and inquire about batteries and just sort of want return on investment. Mm. Um, it's hard to to show them that. Because they just see the dollars. Mm. So you've got to show them why it works better to put a battery in. If you're just chasing return on investment and the only thing you're looking at is dollars, it's going to be hard to, to show them. But if you can show them or, you know. I mean, the comfort alone, if I get a blackout and my yeah. fridge goes off and well, the kids it. can't do the homework. So that comfort level, I mean, it's funny when they buy themselves a nice leather couch and they lean back into it, nobody's starting doing the ROI calculation. No, that's right. There's no return on investment <laughs> there. And that's that's where you've got to sort of educate them is then, you know, 
Solar is big about return on investment. You know, it's going to take you this much in power bills to save it. Where and, and I would say between three and five years is really nowadays for a good yeah. quality system, and yeah. depending how much they're home and all of those. That's yeah, the it depends on how much they're yeah. using. Yeah. And there's, yeah. you know, the variables that are mm. always mm. there. But, mm. yeah, that's with the battery, those variables are different. It's, and you add straight yeah. away two or three years minimum with a battery to those numbers. Yeah, you know? it's a beautiful sunny day and, and everyone turns on their aircon because mm. they're hot and uh, the grid turns off. Well, you've just lost your return on investment because that whole that hour, who knows mm. how long your power's off for, well, you haven't gotten your, your, your feed in or your, your savings. You've, mm. you've got no power. So, you know, that, that quickly eats into it where if you've got the battery. You've got still the comfort. You've got the comfort. Your fridge and your freezers, you're not worried about, mm. Mm. you know, hundreds of dollars of groceries going. Any bushfire, if you had a battery, you possibly your pumps would be be able to be backed up. That's, yep. a, that's yeah. a big safety yeah. aspect. Yeah, regional Victoria is big for that. Um, so many people run their, their on tank water and mm. if they lose that water pump, mm. they've got no water to drink, they've got no water to shower, they've got no water for the toilet mm. and mm. Um, that's not good for anyone. Mm. So. Mm. so which batteries do you mainly install? We have been mainly install Tesla for our grid tight houses mm. um, and then we push Power Plus for um, our off grid. Just mm. Mm. same thing, just proven. Is there a different budget? Uh, because, I mean, Tesla is a decent-looking battery. It's a very well-functioning battery. Yep. But you're not getting it for nothing. No. Are there other batteries that are quite good quality, not cheap, cheap, but a little bit more affordable than a Tesla? Um, so, well, there's the SunGrow. We, we have pretty good reliabilities with SunGrow. So if they are sort of chasing that cheaper option mm -hmm. where price is an issue, we do look at a, a SunGrow. Um, or Q cell, um, but we do try to steer them towards sort of that that better quality because you want something around, you know, you want something that lasts the warranty and longer. You don't want something that just set and forget, huh? Yeah, that's it. Set and forget. Mm. That's what mm. you want. Okay. Um, you uh, hear in the industry a lot that the companies that kind of expand and then try to come into Bendigo and all that, they use a lot of contractors and subbies and stuff. Yep. What's your opinion about using in-house staff versus subbies? Um, I prefer in-house staff. Um, we've, since I've been with Sunergy, we've had nothing but in-house in staff. Um, it just makes everything after the install easier. The the If there's an issue... You don't we, get I, the finger pointing. Well, that's it. I can talk to the person that installed it and say, you know, I can manage his mm. quality of work easier because I can just drive around there and look at it. Mm. Mm. Um, I'm not dealing with f finger pointing, you know, oh, I didn't do that one. It's that, oh, yeah, we'll get back to it as soon as I can. Oh, mm. yeah. And it just goes around in circles and the customer's sitting there with a system that doesn't work and going, well, what's going on? So it makes you look bad because you can't do anything for them because – a lot of the retailers aren't electricians, so to speak. So even tech support after, like they can call up and uh, our salesman is um, right across the off-grid side of things and, and batteries. He, he's very knowledgeable in that. And then, But you can also talk directly to me and I can give you actual electrical advice mm. as opposed to, oh, what about this? Oh, we'll have to talk to our electrician. Oh, that's me. So. So if you use Sunergy, you get in-house installers. You're not getting Johnny Subby on Monday and Bill Subby on Tuesday. No, well, that's it, yeah. You, you deal with the same people from start to finish. So, mm. you know, if, if I'm not out installing, you might see me in the office and I can maybe sell you the job and then you might see me install it as well. And mm. then mm. If you, when you come in, say hello and I'm still there. So mm. Mm. Um, it helps. I heard a story of a company that used a lot of subbies that when there were issues and they couldn't identify it, they actually invented a person. So I think it was Swen. So who stuffed this up? Oh, that must have been Swen. There is no Swen. But, <laughs> but they just made him up to talk to the customer. I will have to chase Swed because they just didn't know who of the zombies had done the latest sin. Jesus. <laughs> nah, that's not good. <laughs> you don't have a Swen? Nah. Nah, we've got a Luke. <laughs> <laughs> that's you? Yep, that's me. So, yeah, All basically, right. yeah. The buck stops with Luke. Yep. You don't need a Swen? Nah. No. Okay. I'm, I, 
Well, that's it. If you've he, had, was a, yeah. he was a backpacker. <laughs> the way. If you've had it installed in the last five years, most likely I've installed it. Uh, we had another in-house electrician for a short period of time, um, but obviously he, he did his accreditation with us, so mm. he learned to install solar from me. So mm. Mm. it's very easy to sit there and look at it and go, oh, yeah, I know what he's done. So, mm. 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 Have you ever heard the term solar sharks? And solar cowboys. <laughs> I've heard co- cowboys before. Um, yeah. But what, what are they? Oh, well, the cowboys, it's, I think mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. They come in and they just wing it basically and, yeah, they, then they do everything wrong <laughs> or just not quite right and you, you're left with a dodgy system. When you inspect them, let's say something's gone wrong, can you walk up and tell pretty quickly that one was a bit of a rush job? Yeah, yeah, you can usually tell. Um, cables aren't secured properly. Um, what about the way the panels sometimes sit and the tiles are ground and all? Yeah, that? well, that's it. You can you can see, you know, the, the, they've just made it fit. You know, the guy in the office has sold six kilowatts to this house without even looking at the roof, and they've turned up and half the panels aren't going to fit. So now you've got landscape and. What yeah, about over the ridge? I like the one over the ridge. Yeah, you, you don't see that as much anymore because no. um, that's a pretty easy one to – like it, it is against regulation. So um, if they're being inspected by an electrical inspector, they're picked up pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. But um, that used to be the olden day, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that used to be the way they installed it. So um, Just just have a little bit on the roof and the rest flips over like a sail. That's it. And I can get you more solar – and when there's a big windstorm, you'll just rattles a little bit. Yeah, that's it. We'll just put a few more <laughs> screws in the feet. And so, um, yeah. yeah look, I, you don't do that? No, well, we can't do that. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be back fixing it anyway because the inspector would knock it on its head pretty quickly. So, yeah, um, yeah th- those days are gone, which is good. There has been a big cleanup of the industry. You're sort of even just talking to some of the old guys in the industry and you go, yeah, that's how we used to do it. Obviously, it's changed, but you're like, okay, I can see why they had to regulate it yeah, and yeah. Get, get on top of people. I mean, you in Victoria are lucky in some way because you have every system being appropriately inspected by inspectors. Yes. But this cowboy stuff still happens in New South Wales. I drive past stuff like that every week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, was, it was a bit funny because I did my accreditation in, um, in Wodonga. And um, just listening to some of them, yeah, the the self inspection sort of thing. You sign it yourself off, and I'm like, oh, okay, that seems a bit unusual because you know, like all our prescribed work has to have a third party inspector come through and, and check it. Mm, um, mm, mm. Maybe that's why we're having a lot of arguments with that TechSafe flow on thing because we've already had an inspector out there to tell us that it's fine. Why do we need someone else to come through and tell them again? Mm. I think maybe if you. If we didn't have the electrical inspector, they'd probably have a better, a more a purpose, bigger, bigger yeah. part, you know, mm, in mm, purpose for, mm, mm. you know, getting rid of these cowboys because mm. there's nothing worse than you're trying to offer a good system, you're trying to install a, a quality system and do really good workmanship and you mm. lose out to a bloke that just, oh, yeah, well, I can sign it off. Mm. So we don't have that problem, but, yeah, I can see how it could probably frustrate yeah, other yeah. states. Why is panel position important? Can't you just whack them anywhere? Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, roof space is valuable, um, so you need to make sure they are facing the right ways for your house. There's no point putting it all on a north roof when there's a tree in the way. So you really need to look at your environment as well as, you know, everyone says face it north, but if there's shading issues in the north, well, you don't put them there. You, you, you split them out, you do your east-west, you explain to the customer why, um, you know, you, with how they use the system, an east-west split might be better because, you know, that, that little bit of sun on the horizon might be enough to, to just get it to turn on that little bit earlier with the, the voltage range and you're starting to produce solar earlier because mm. the sun's on it at that good angle. And if you put it west and come home at 4.30, then you still get the solar to support whatever you start doing in the house. Well, that's it. It's yeah, a, a, it's a wider solar curve as opposed to a higher solar curve. So it usually works out about the same anyway. So you ask the customer kind of about their consumption pattern and that plays a bit of a role of how you lay out the system? Yeah, but you also, look, you also talk to them about 
how they want it to look. You know, if they mm. don't want it on the front of the house because they don't want to see it from the street, mm. well, you've mm. got you've got to show them. Okay, well, we can do this. This is what's going to be the benefits and the mm. you know the negatives for it, mm. and just so they understand because there's no point going, oh yeah, yeah, and we bang this system, and then all of a sudden they're like, well, hang on, this isn't doing much, and you so you've got to try and customers like that either get them across on board to say, well, if we go full black everything and you've got a dark roof, it's not going to stand out like it did in the old days. You know, you, you're driving along and you see the silver panel on the silver rail. With and the blue uh, surface. Yeah, the blue. Ugly. Yeah, the they're, the, they're, the they're isolator ugly. cover that hasn't had the plastic taken off so it's bright blue. <laughs> um, you know, those days are gone. We've got, you know, there's black railing, there's black everything. Everything can be black. Um, so it looks me. Yeah, well, that's it. You know, and you so offer those systems? Yep. Yeah, we, we, our standard is full black railing. Um, all our panels are a black frame. Mm. Um, and then obviously there's options for actual full black panels that don't show you the little white cell lines and things like mm. that. So, mm. um, so they look actually quite integrated in the roof. Sometimes you can't actually see their solo if you're a bit from a distance. That's it, yeah. They just... They just sort of integrate, even on a white roof or a light coloured roof, because there isn't lots of things hanging off the edge and mm, mm. it just sort of integrates and it doesn't stand out back in, like in the days that it used to. Mm. And if and, you and do it. Yeah. I always say, what's the point of saving 500 bucks to 800 bucks a quarter and make your house $30,000 uglier? Well, that's it. Yeah. If it looks ugly, it's it's no good. You know, people spend a lot of money on their houses. Mm. So, you, you know, the... They paint the walls a certain colour. They, you know, you do the backyard a certain way because of the way it looks. You don't want to start looking up and even just annoying things where, you know, maybe the top solar panel is just that 100 mil to the one way and not lined up in a perfect square or there's no sort of rhyme or reason as to where the panel is put. Um, you know, you've, you've that got it. Yeah. Stuff like that annoys you, does it? Yep, very much so. I, I can't, you see some of the old systems and, yeah, there's... There's, you know, the top panels this way by 100 mil or they've turned it sideways to fit more on and so. Um, and, and then you think more on. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, I mean, there's, there's a time and place to, to you can do sort of both ways, but you've got to try and line everything up. Mm -hmm. Like straight lines look good. So even if you're going to do something a bit out of the, out of the ordinary, You've got to try and at least mm. make it look mm. good. Like obviously you can't be – not every single problem is going to be seen until you're on site installing, but mm. if you can at least make it look neat, that's half the battle. If it right. looks neat. So the rule really is that if you go with Sun Energy, your solar panels will be straight because otherwise it really annoys Luke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tells me a bit about you. Um you told me before, you know, the front roof and stuff like that with the shade. So how do you deal with shade? Uh, chainsaw works. Get them to <laughs> – so it's it's a bit of everything. I think know. in Melbourne you know, wouldn't be allowed. Maybe in Bendigo that's a solution. <laughs> yeah, well, that's – I mean, you can trim trees and, and move things, you know, aerials, mm. things on the roof that are causing issues. We You move them. Um, you discuss about getting trees or something trimmed. Um, or you just install where there isn't, you know, you go out to site, you stand on the roof and you look mm. and you go, all right, hang on a minute. In winter, that's going to be an issue. It's not an issue right now or, or whatever, but mm. Mm. look at the issues that could arise, talk to the customer, explain them and then appropriately but move or. Are there any technical solutions that make it a bit easier for shade? You're, um, you're oh, there's micro inverters. Mm. So your, your end phase systems can, can help with, um, shade if you've got shading issues. Um, I mean, panels themselves have come a long way. So a lot of those small shading issues, you know, the odd tree or mm. Mm. that might shade in the morning or something like that, they are starting to be less of a concern. It's really just like your big chimneys and things like that. So, you know, your panels and your inverters and the technology around them have come a long way. Um, there's optimizers and different systems you can go with that mean that they work better mm. in shaded issues where you've got lots of shady shading. But um, 
So yeah. you're saying there's technical solutions yep. with the microinverters, and then also there is flexibility in how you install the panels. Yeah, I think the biggest one is flexibility on install. I mm. mean, you can have all the technology in the world, but they're solar panels. They don't work in the shade. They don't work at night. So you need to get them in the sun for as long as possible. So the biggest one is, I think, is putting them in where, the right. they, where they need to be. It's it's enough to say this is where I've designed it, but you sitting at a desk an hour away doesn't show you the full picture. So same thing, if you go local, you know, I can come out there and actually look at your house and go, well, hang on a minute, you've got this huge gum tree or even, you know, the satellite imagery could be old. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's no th – that tree was a metre tall. <laughs> it's now five metres high. So hang on a minute, let's <laughs> let's let's reevaluate. So mm -hmm. um, I think the technology there has sort of um, – it made it more important for position mm. where mm. before it was, you know, the old systems where you'd lose the whole thing with a little bit of shading. It doesn't happen as much anymore. No, so. Right. so what do you say to owners of systems who have got a one, one and a half kilowatt system and think they got solar but still getting huge bills? Um, yeah, I think get someone out there to have a look, make sure it's working. It may not be working. It, it might be half a system. It might be a dirty system, you might even have faults on it that are intermittent because of um, due, morning dews. So you might be getting water in places and it dries out later in the afternoon and you come home and it's working. But for the whole morning, it's had dew on it, which caused an earth fault and the inverter hasn't worked. So I think those people that are on the premium tariffs or have older systems, I mean, um, you can take advantage of the rebates if your system's older than 10 years and you need to replace. So if you've got an older system, I think it's probably time to start having someone out to look at it, make sure that there isn't any faults on it, there isn't any issues you can mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. or and make sure that, you know, the whole system's working. You might have two strings and only one's working and although you're seeing, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing credit on my bill, it must be fine, it's only half working, so... Yeah. So instead of walking around and saying solar doesn't work, actually get it checked out. Well, yeah, make sure it is working. You can <laughs> you can argue after when I come and tell you that it is working as to why your bill's no good, but mm. you can usually work out pretty quickly why. Um, mm. Mm. Oh, I'm not getting much feed in on my bill. Well, hang on a minute. You've, you've just turned off your gas and you've put in a massive air con that you're running all day. You've, you're now using your hot water during the day. You're doing all the right things. The fact that your bill might not be getting as much feed-in tariff, it's it's still being used, it's mm. still working, and your actual savings would be surprising if we actually turned it off. You'd see the bill would be double. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. yeah, so. And what about that jacuzzi and the sauna in the corner there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're right. Yeah, that's it, so. Yeah, yeah. I hear about those solar warranties. They go for long. There's 5, 10, 15, even 25 years. Can you explain the whole warranty game and what installation type warranty do you give people? 12-month warranty on workmanship, but we warranty all our manufacturers' warranty as is. So mm -hmm. your 10-year inverter warranty, we cover that. Um, so... So how does that work? I've got an inverter, I put it on, something happens to it at year five. Let's say it gets hit by hail, uh, by, by lightning, that yep. would have an insurance claim, so that's not a warranty. Yep. But let's say it didn't get hit by lightning and it just doesn't work. What happens then? Do I ring you? Yep. So you call us, um, we book in a time or we come out when we've got spare time. You know, we might finish a job early, we'll come out. We'll do all the tests, take all the photos and basically send it to the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, they call back and go, yep, we're sending you an inverter, um, just replace it and um, we just swap it over, put it in, put it back on your monitoring if you've got it, send it back and you just have to make a phone call. That's that's your job. So, um, yeah. And you're back in business. That's it. You're but if you pick the cheap system and you ring and the company's not there anymore – then you're going to have to spend a lot of time, isn't it? Because where do you go next? Yeah, well, that's it. You, you, you can come to us and we, we still try and put through other companies' warranties, um, but it's just a bit harder when you're not the installer. 
you don't know how long the the, the warranty's for. You've got to come out and get serial numbers and um, it just can take a bit longer if we're not the actual installer. But right. we also don't know the warranties of some of those other gear. You have to start jumping on the internet, Googling, mm. Mm. finding out if it's that's that inverter or that inverter is it, you know, some mm. of them say, Oh, we're a five we're ten years warranty, but then you read the fine print and it's if registered and the company didn't register it. So Or if you've registered and every two year inspected. Yeah, there's things like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Or um Yes, the first five years you do get everything, but the second five years it's only the parts. The yep. labor is still to be covered. So the advice is really for people to read the fine print or go with a reputable installer who actually properly explains it to you. Yeah, and the, and they use good gear. Mm. That's the thing is good gear offers good warranties and, you know, cheap gear tends to have cheaper warranties. So if you're getting the quality gear, mm. you know you've got a, 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 a warranty that's backed mm, mm. and they tend to use companies that have been around long enough to say that they are happy to mm. back their warranty. So it's, it's easy enough for some company to come out, you know, they've been six months old, I offer 30 years warranty and then <laughs> you go, but you've only been around for six months. How can you know that these things are going to last that long? So. And, you're, and you're 60. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> It's, it's coming in the Zimmerman. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No disrespect to old people. I'm one of them. Yeah, I know <laughs> lots of old people. <laughs> They're good customers. That's it. Yep. The pensioners are some of the best people who can take the best benefit out of solar because yes. they're home during the day, they're using the electricity and the solar can give them more comfort and certainty on the bills. Yeah, and usually there's they're only – the two of them, um, so they're not using – they're not big users anyway, so they can get away with a smaller system mm. so they don't have to outlay that big, big dollar mark of, you know, mm. your $10,000. You know, they, they don't need those huge systems that families are chasing mm. because and, – and, and they tend not to run a big hydroponic system in the backyard. <laughs> no. No, well, but they're not, they're not running pools either, you know. Mm. They mm. don't have lots of pools and, and – yeah, all the, those. The stuff that takes up a lot of battery. Yeah. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, let's say you come to me, you sold me a solar and battery system, and now you tell me it's going to get installed in a week's time. What are the processes when you finally arrive? Are you going to turn my house upside down? No, well, usually we try to work in with you as much as we can. So obviously the power has to go off for a little bit, but we tend to just sort of, it's noisy, but we get in. You mean drilling into the walls and stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, even you're drilling into the roof. So that, that, so it's mainly a noisy process, but we try and not to inconvenience you as much as we can. Mm. Um, obviously we're outside, so you can be in the house by yourself. Um, but what's happening, you put the inverter first or the panels? Or... We usually start on the roof first because that's the, the, the big job. Mm. Um, so we usually sort of split it up. We get the, um, get someone up on the roof um, obviously you put up all your edge protection and things first, but then, you know, some might up off the roof and then someone might start on the inverter, but at least, you know, you, you get a plan of attack first, work out, okay, we're going to, this is where we're working. This is what we're going to do. Someone might go and make sure there isn't going to be issues. Um, working thing. on the switchboard at the same time? Yeah, so, sort of. M most likely you, you you try to leave that to the end because working on live switchboards is a no-no. So you want to get everything else sort of ready and then kill the power and, and then do that side of things. And do it relatively quickly so the people are out of power yeah, for a short time. That's it. So just so, you know, they are home. So, you know, you, you don't want to be sitting in the dark. They're getting a battery to avoid that. So, um, mm. yeah, we just try to, you know, streamline it as much as we mm. can mm. and hopefully not inconvenience people too much. I believe that most people think when they get a battery, oh, well, I'll just fit it anywhere. But then when you walk around finding the right and safest spot for a battery, that's a whole little art in itself. Yeah. Well, that's it. Um, it's got to be fire protected. So if you've got a weatherboard wood home, putting it willy nilly anywhere is going to result in huge amounts of cement sheet that looks ugly. So, you know, the placement's important. If we can place it somewhere that it doesn't need to be fire rated, so to speak, you know, under the regs, um, 
that can help it make it look a lot, lot neater. You obviously don't want it sitting baking in the sun because heat is no one's friend, so you, you don't want it sitting in the wrong location. Um, and you need to be able to get equipment to it, you know, so you, you've got to put it in the right spot so that it looks neat when it's finished mm. and it works well when it's finished, so it doesn't. Mm. Have you ever turned up on a job that was done by somebody else, be it off-grid or even a home battery, where you kind of just went like, Oh my God. Uh, we, we've pulled up to a few off grids that, um, yeah, have been questionable. Some of them are old systems, some of them are DIY systems, but um, there's a lot of undersizing and, and cowboyish um, installs. Um, location can be a bit, bit iffy too, you know, you might have something just sitting in full sun all day and it's like, we need to cover this, otherwise it's just going to... You know. it. The sun will kill the battery. Well, we get 40 degrees in Bendigo sometimes, mm. so, mm. you know, mm. you stand in the sun at 40 degrees all day and I don't think you'll work very well either. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's a matter of... It's knowing the area, I think, and I don't think you get a lot of that from local installers, even, you know, even the big companies or even the one-man bands, you know, the, the people that know the area know... How not know to the stuff. weather, know that. So. How not to stuff it up. Yeah. But, but the fly-ins, I call them the, uh, um, what do you call them? I was going to say cockroach, but that's not nice. Um, you know, the the ones that fly in, eat all the grass. Oh, locusts. Yeah. Yeah. I find these oh, these big companies that come into town for a short time and then just try to flog a couple of cheap solar systems, yeah. they're a bit like locusts because they eat it all empty and then when you want them to come back, there's no, there's no comeback. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. I actually think you're a very nice person when you've just said you would go and fix those systems from those cheap companies because some other guys go, I'm not touching it. We, we try to help them. You know, it's, you, don't want, you don't want people to get... Um, upset or um, oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of, um, disenchanted with solar. Mm. You know, that whole solar doesn't work. Mm. You know, they tell 10 people mm. solar doesn't work or this person did this and it just, if you try to help them and, and you can show them the benefits, you know, it pays for itself really, you know. So if you can help some people, you know, they are, the, they are locals so you, you might see them again. Mm. You might not but, you know, you might see them down the street and the last thing you want to do is have them upset at you so it's easier to make sure they're happy. So, you know, you, you you do your best to help those people that have been caught out in a a locust rot basically. So, I would call you the solar saint. <laughs> no, <laughs> not that. <laughs> no, because there are a lot of solar companies who go, hang on, you bought cheap crap and now I take the legal responsibility for that system. And that means I now have to go through everything, check it all out, make sure it's done properly, make sure it's got the right fuses and all that. Yeah. And on those jobs, you really make no money because the end customer thought he had a good system and yeah. now you got to tell him, hang on, sorry, this is not right, this is not right, and this is not right. And that can be upsetting because they paid good bucks for it. Yep. And sometimes, yeah, it's not about taking a hit, but it's just showing them what what's available and, you know. Just fixing it up. Fixing it up, getting them up and ready. And it, it, it might pay for itself later when they tell their five mates, you know, mm. go, and, go and see these guys. They, were, they helped me out when I was in all sorts. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay. word of mouth is very important in, well, I think personally anywhere you work, mm. word of mouth mm. is probably, that's free advertising. You don't have to pay for that. So. Yeah. Um, and look, people who ask their friends and get good advice, the chances for them to go ahead with that job is much higher yes. than somebody who's just seen an ad somewhere. That's it, yeah. If you can actually answer their questions so that they know what, what's going on and mm. what's going to happen mm. and mm. what they expect, it's mm. very hard to say no when you have all the information. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. So, no. yeah. I get that. Um, black solar panels, yep. are they worth it? They look good. So they're not that much. I don't think they're even more expensive. So they look good. Most of the time the efficiency levels are same or better. Um, so you say if you do want to get a solar system, the aesthetics are important and black panels make it more aesthetic. Yes. 
Personally, I, I personally I think a, a full black panel is is what you'd put on any house. Mm. Um, some people aren't too worried, but once you show them, they tend to lean towards a full black panel, and you can show them the specs and say, "Look, there's not that much difference," mm. especially mm. in you know, like you said, it, we're talking dollars over a long period of time, so. Mm. 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 Um, it's not going to be the difference between paying your system off or not paying your system off. It's no, we're talking three, four hundred bucks in most yeah. cases. Black panels can be a tiny bit more expensive, but not much. No, it's it's not much. It's not enough to say, oh no. You know, mm, so and mm, mm. once it and it makes, I think it looks better. And when things look better on a house, it only adds value. So you know, a house with all black panels and solar versus a house with no solar, you've added value and it looks good. Got it, got it. Now, let's say I get you into my front door, you talk to me about solar. How do you explain the savings to me? I mean, how much are you going to make a year and all of that? How do you work all that out? Uh, our, our program <laughs> does that for us. So we um, we use open solar. It, it sort of shows it all. And but you don't you, use yeah. those old timber rolls where you kind of put the numbers across and, you know, like they did the math in the... 1900s or no, so? I'm, I'm a bit young for that. Um, <laughs> no, we, we just sort of, yeah. We, we get their bill though. You make sure you get their power bill and adjust it to mm. their usage. There's no good showing them a normal person or a, a below average person savings when they, they're they different, you know. You, you can't say, oh, you're going to pay off. They've got a $600 bill and they've got a two kilowatt system versus someone with a $100 bill and a 10 kilowatt system. So mm -hmm. you've got to show them their system specific. And um, So you're saying you've got to look at their bill and their bill helps you determine what the system size is that they should have. Yes. Because if you oversize the system, you might make more money, but it's not really helping the customer. No, that's it. Yeah. If they're, if they're a low, usage, mm. low user, there's mm. no point selling them a big system. Because but you make more profit. Yeah, but so. <laughs> um, you don't operate like that, do you? No. I, I, no. I know some guys who do. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, I'd love everyone to have 20 kilowatts of solar on their roof, but sometimes it's just not viable for everyone. It, it's, mm. you know, the, the 60, 70-year-old lady living by herself with a $30 power bill What's the what benefit is she going to have from ten kilowatts on a on a roof? She's not going to pay it off, and she may not even be in the house in five years, you know, or ten years. So, mm -hmm. why sell her something she doesn't need? It's a bit rough, I think. So, I'm telling you, you're the solar saint. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no. I think it's just good business practice, really. You must sleep very well. Sometimes I've got kids, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where has solar? been, meaning old solar, where has it changed to nowadays and where are we going to go in the future? Um, I think from the old days to now, it is just a lot of quality. Um, there seems to be a lot of investment in the R&D side of things to get new products and good products. Um, there's been a big revamp of install techniques to make it safer because it was dangerous, you know, some of those old systems, your DC cables run in TPS and undersized. And what does TPS mean? Uh, like standard um, building cable, like for your power Oh, yeah, yeah. I, in my house, in the early days, I had the normal electric cable yep. and somebody with the biro just wrote solar on it. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've had a house like that where um, we were replacing their system, luckily, but, yeah, it was running standard power cable with all the other power cables and there was nothing written on it to say it was solar. So, you know, you could turn – a normal electrician might turn the main switch off in the um, in the house and be working up in the roof and be go, oh, well, I might tap into this circuit or something like that. They just cut it and – That's high voltage. 600 volts of – you've got a, basically a welder burning away in your roof with all the insulation and the dust and turning it off means getting out of the roof – getting your ladder to the, a point they'd climb up on the roof to turn that off. So, yeah, so there's been a lot of revamp on actually the workmanship, which has been, I, I think, a very positive thing. Mm. Um, so it does help get rid of the cowboys. 
Um, Victoria in particular with the inspection, with it being prescribed work, that's made it a lot harder for people to get their systems through because without a certificate, you can't get it with, registered with the power company, you can't get your feed-in tariff. So people very quickly catch on that, hang on, there's something not right here, I haven't got a certificate, I'm not getting my export credits mm, mm. as much as it may be nothing, it's still it's still something and people like to see it. So um, that has been, I think, very positive. Um, even even TechSafe, um, with all their pros and cons, I think they're, they're helping, you know, there's a thing out there about electrical inspectors being a lot older than, than they probably prefer. So they may not be getting up on roofs or um, inspecting on the roof safely because they are, it might be hard for them or it could be wet. It could be the day they turned up and it's raining and they can't get up there, but, you know, oh, I can't get back. Oh, it looks good from here. I'm not saying all inspectors do that, but I'm sure there's cases where mm. inspectors have sort of gone. I don't want to drive the other three hours back here again. Yeah, well, you know, there, there has to be, there's systems I've seen installed that, you sit there and you see things that aren't right mm. and they have got a certificate and they have been signed off and you go, there must have been a reason why he didn't see this, whether it was hidden, whether it was, mm. you know, something he just, he might have had a bad day. Everyone has a bad day. And makes well, the lady from the house came with a cup of tea. Well, that's it. Yeah. You know, she come out with biscuits and then he started talking and then realised, oh, hang on, it's been an hour. I've, I've got 10 other jobs to do. And well, this one... All the extra first five things looked good, so yeah. I assume the rest is fine. Well, that's it, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. so right. they, they can pick up some of those things and I think I think TechSafe, uh, I think they should be more involved in the workman's side of things, mm. seeing how it's installed as opposed so, to so picking So sorry to rents. ask a stupid yep. question, but we don't have TechSafe in, okay. in, in New South Wales. So what does TechSafe do? So TechSafe... Uh, inspect jobs for ESV. They do the CER as well. So I would have thought you might have had them out here as well. But so they, they're just like a third party group of people that go out and inspect solar and battery installs on top of your electrical inspector, which is ruffling a few feathers. Um, because people say, I've got the inspector, I got myself now, I need a third party and you probably have to pay for it too. I think it's all free, but I've got to go back and fix it. And it, it can be a bit hard. Sometimes I feel like you can't talk to them. Um, mm. That's my biggest problem is they'll pick up something and you go, I don't think that's quite right. But it's sort of you're dealing directly with them as opposed to like I've spoken to my inspector about a few things that they've pulled up on and you go, oh, what about this? And he's like, no, nah, that's not right. And then you talk to the tech safe inspector, he goes, nah, that's what I'm saying. And you just kind of left that you have to do it, even if mm. you don't agree with it. Mm. Mm. Um, they do say there's, you know, a draft period and you can argue then, but every time I have, it's gone nowhere and sort of, and then I, I think they should be more involved in the workmanship side of things, you know, making sure that tiles are grounded properly. So they sit flat the conduits are ran in the roof correctly and, you know, the plugs are right. No no plastic cable ties. But, yeah, but things steel. like that. Yeah. No, I think yeah. the inspectors themselves are more than capable of making sure the system's safe mm -hmm. and complies. But so in summary, basically what you're saying, the systems now are much safer than they were many years ago. Yes. And what about going forward? What do you think, where are we going with the EV coming, being integrated in the home? Paint a picture for me in the next five to ten years. Um, basically just, f I think, full electric homes. Everything's going to be electric. Um, you know, they warn us about the gas and, and being turned off and things. Um, uh, I don't quite agree that they're going to, they're not going to shut off gas because we've got gas fired power plants. So I think it's more about making sure that we have gas to run those power plants and making sure that, you know, we don't have to turn people off gas so that the power plant can run. It's more about... So it's reducing demand in the households so that the gas is available for the power plant. Yeah, because we just don't have the reserves. Mm. Um, mm. So same with sort of fuel and that. But yeah, I, I think the way they're pushing houses to become more electric dominate, dominant mm. is to make sure that 
where we need the gas, i.e. the power pl- power plants, it's available because mm. there's mm. no good saying, you know, the power plant doesn't have enough gas, so it's got to <laughs> do a rolling bl- brownout and we've got to shut gas off to the household. So now you don't have power because there's not enough gas for the house and you don't have gas because there's not enough gas for the power plant. So mm. you're, you're across two things and you're in trouble. But I think, yeah. yeah. Just get solar and get a battery and don't worry about it. That's it. Yeah, go just go full off grid. It's even better. <laughs> so now I hear the story that people say in the old days you just bought solar for a cheap electricity bill, but now they're literally going a bit into a marriage with you, Luke, because they're getting their solar and then two years later you come and put the battery in. Yep. And then three years later they're getting an EV and you put the EV charger in and now they're looking to save more money so they put a heat pump for their hot water in. And so over the last 10 years you've been to that house five times and helped with that whole electrification. Yep. So it's very important to pick the initial operator that it's the right guy locally that can give you all those services because if you have three or four different operators doing di- three or four different things, you've got a spaghetti yeah. nation. Yeah, and everyone does things differently. So, you know, someone's opinion of this, someone's opinion of that. Um, We tend to use um, things that integrate well with each other so that they're not fighting each other. You know, there's no no point having six different apps to monitor your solar and usage, you know. You've got, you know, I've, I've got one inverter. I need three phones here. Well, that's it. You know, you, you, you've got three different types of solar inverter because you've kept expanding and they're all on a different different app. Um, different panels of different looks in different yeah, spots. Yeah, that's it. And then your EV charges an, an app in itself, your, your batteries, another app, um, and none of it can see each other. So that's the thing. Like, you know, we, we do sell a, the, the Orbis charger which comes with its own app and monitoring, but because it has CTs and an energy meter, it can see the solar and it can see your house consumption. Mm. So looking at one app, you can see the big picture of what's going on. Oh, okay, I, I can see that I'm doing X solar. I'm still exporting, I'm charging I'm the still car. exporting, I'm, I'm charging, s- I'm this, I'm mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. You know, Tesla's, that's another reason why Tesla's good is because it's, it's one integrated app that has all the information you need mm. and then now you might not put a, um, a normal car charger on. You might lean more towards the Tesla car charger because it'll integrate into the power wall and, and that itself mm. and mm. you use your app and it does all the things you need. But if you've got a Tesla car charger and you've got a SunGrow battery and you've got a Fronius inverter and uh, your heat pump, something else, and you've got to watch four different things to find out what's actually going on. It's it's not very smart home. It's it's yeah, you, you end up giving up. I know I would. <laughs> so go with the integrated solutions. Yeah, it it helps. So and then mm-hmm. they can also integrate it further if you need to. You know, yeah, you could yeah, you might yeah. have all these different mm. products, but you might look at a different energy meter, like mm, a solar mm. analytics, so you can see the whole picture and, and go from there. Got it. Now, um, Leonard and I had an idea for a new solar company called Shady Solar. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we thought they would, you know, advertise just as successful as some of the big players do with the cricketers and all that. Um, and we need a bit of material for Shady Solar, you know. We want to we wanna have a berry white music tone where Barry White's song kind of thing goes, I smear silicon all over your roof with a bit of a sexual undertone. Um, yep. Do you have any real horror stories that could be a good source for us for our, for our shady solar? Um, Something where you go, oh, my God, I can't believe they got away with that. Well, I think the big one is advertising battery hybrids for $3,000 out of pocket and then they're actually – including all those interest-free rebate or interest-free loans. And you go, that's not, that's not free. You're still paying that back. So I think that's the big one. Um, so there are companies who advertise that you can get a battery for 3000 yeah. but they're actually taken off the price of the, a loan that I think the Victorian government allows you to do. So yes. the, the true price is actually quite higher yeah, it's- because you actually have to pay that loan back. So that, that's very misleading. Yeah, that's why you you need to read the fine print, and you know it. It sometimes is one of those new systems that are on the market that haven't been proven yet. Mm. Not to say they're 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 no good, but 
I would rather stick with something that's been around long enough to say that, well, there are systems out there that are 15 years old and it's still working as opposed to their systems out there that are 12 months old and not work. Yeah, I'm, 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 they're offering me 10 year warranty on something that's mm. been on the market for for a year. And that's the whole company. So, mm. Mm. Because you told me in the olden days systems were sometimes installed rather rough and ready, um, have you turned up somewhere where you really just said, no, we've got better turn that off and give you something new? Um, you haven't found a horror one like that yet? N- no. No, with the... With the the new laws and regulations, mm. it has removed those real horror stories. I have seen a couple, but it's usually we are, they're getting a new system anyway. Mm. It's 10, mm. 15 years old. It's mm. not working. It's that small kilowatt and they want a bigger system. So most of the horror stories have been, I've got this old system. I want it. I want a new one. And mm. you're just coming and you're going, oh, wow. Um but they don't want you to hickle pickle back the old system and make it last again. No, not usually. Mm. I mean, a few people are on the premium feed-in tariff are chasing. You know, maybe, oh, you know, my one of my panels is stuffed and the system's not working. And I is wanna... there a, is there a panel to be replaced? Look, no, there isn't. The only mm. thing we can do is take it down and mm. bridge it out, sort of thing, and mm. get your five panels working instead of your six. But. Most of the time, it, yeah, those real horror ones that are really bad or DIY, they're, they're usually coming out by now. Mm. They have given up because. Mm. All right. Um, I hear that uh, the government recently decided to invest a little bit in maybe making solar panels in Australia again. How yep. likely are you going to think that will be? Well, we, we, we sell Tindo, so they are made in Australia. Um Obviously, we need a lot more investment to get a Australian-made panel as opposed to an Australian-constructed panel. Um, but all things are positive, you know. Like we got the sun. That's it. We've got the <laughs> sun. We've got the technology. We've got the resources and the people to do it. So there's no reason why we can't do it. Um, but you know, we we need investment in in the industry. We need support as well. You know, people need to buy it. So. You know, if it's... Tw- I found sometimes people, there's a Chinese-made product, here's the Aussie-made product. That's maybe only 20% more. Yeah. But they still go for the cheaper stuff. Yeah, it's it, it's hard to push. Price is still important. I mean... Um, people who buy solar usually do it because they got smacked by a high electricity bill. So yeah. They, so they need the money. That's it. And, you know... F- we're in a bit of a tough time at the moment. So it, it is hard to, as a customer personally, to sort of go, well, there, there needs to be a bit of education to show them why it's better or how it's better. Um, mm, mm. But like we we still try to. But yeah. you seldom are the cheapest quote, are you? Because you, yeah, if you are. use quality versus cheap crap, you, well, that's can't, it, yeah. you can't be the cheapest. No, that's it. Well, we, you know, there's there's cheap and then there's really cheap. So we offer a, a cheaper, we, we do offer a, like a Trina panel mm. on, a, on a system, um, but that's sort of as, as low as we go. Mm. Um, mm. You don't touch Seraphin? No. Mm. No, we try to, we also try to um, offer things that other people don't have so that we can stand out. So mm. we, we sell the Winaco and um, and the Tindo panel. Um, we are the, the stockers for Tindo in Australia, uh, in Bendigo itself. So um, we try to have something that other people can't offer because, you know, sometimes people do look at it as in what's the difference between A company and B company and mm. Mm. if you can show them why your quality is better and how it's different because everyone can sell the same stuff and mm-hmm. then it is just a price point and And, and the quality broke. of the install obviously yeah. too. But the, the Tinder panel is basically made in Australia yep. and the Vineco panel, a non-Chinese panel, Time where on. I believe they also offer a special insurance. Yeah, there's a, a th- they I think they extend the inverter warranty if you install their panels, <laughs> which is already a 30-year warranty on their panels, mm. but they do give you, I think, extra inverter But warranty. also I believe that if their panel um, has certain issues, then 
I believe there's some kind of insurance, but I've got to read the fine print. We better yeah. don't get down that rabbit I hole. I haven't had to warranty one of their panels yet, so I don't know the process, <laughs> <laughs> it's which is a, good. <laughs> so you use Vinaco panel and yep. never had to go through a warranty yet? No, not yet. So, good, good. And, that, that's yeah. a good indictment. Um, EVs, do you see them adding to the size of solar systems? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you get people now who are buying an EV and have an EV, do you tend to give them a bigger solar system? Yeah, well, we we have people inquiring, going, look, I want solar. I'm looking at getting an EV in the next couple of years. Mm. And you've got to take into account, well, we're going to have this extra load. So we don't sell them something that's going to cover their system now. We cover something that's going to be able to be bigger. So they might might be a solid investment might be a bigger investment now on a bigger system, but that's going to save you in the long run because you only get those rebates once. Mm. Unless you're putting in a new inverter, you're not getting your STCs and things like that. So you don't want to put in a system that you go, oh, we'll just put extra panels on later mm. because mm. it's going to cost you more. So we try and make sure they know what's going on first before you mm. size things up. Mm. So if you basically come in and they say we've got little kids and they're all going to be teenagers one day and they're going to use more electricity or they say I want an EV down the track, in those cases you should take that into account for the sizing of the systems. Yeah, so you, you give them options. You show them, well, this is what you need now. This is what would probably offset you really well now. Mm. But let's have a look at what, you what know, the future how, holds. Yeah, what the future holds. Mm, so mm. we might, you know, you might spend a little bit more now but you don't have to spend it later. Mm. So, you know, kids kids are expensive. So if you've, if you've got the money now, sometimes it's you get what you pay for, pay for it now, mm. and you don't think about it later when it, it just When they're turned happens. into teenagers and gas guzzlers in all the electricity. Yeah, they're all use. sitting in there watching TV all day, mm. lights are on, heaters on. Yeah. Heaters on in the rooms they're not in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, it's given me a good picture about Bendigo. I do actually, next time I'm in Melbourne, I will surprise you. I'll come past. I want to see one of your off-grids. Okay. And uh, I really enjoyed you enlightening me. I have learned a lot today. So uh, thank you for flying all the way from Melbourne into That's Sydney. Right. Then, uh, you know, missing a flight, being stuck on the freeway. And yep. finally, you are here. So really, made it. you know, it shows a bit about your persistency. So thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Want more energy answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.